What's up, everybody? This is Stretch Armstrong, and you're checking out RETV. Believe it. Um, if you're living under a rock, uh, the uh, Digiday recently picked uh, Local Now as the best streaming service. Uh, the competition was uh, Tubi, uh, Disney Plus Hulu, right? And uh, Paramount Plus. I would say those are some pretty big names. So I think what, what makes this conference in particular important to this industry is it is a, a flashpoint of all of the stuff. It's, a, it's almost like a core sample of the industry and the technology in the industry and state of the art this and that. And you can, if you're, in my talk, we were talking about building a home studio. If you're thinking of that, this is the place where you can go to walk around and see all the stuff and touch it and ask questions and talk to people. My ego is too big to do anything small. <laughs> so, if CBS has 14, you better figure out how to get 104. So, the old and operator. But whatever you had, I always ask my guys to do a zero. So that was number one because the one thing I know I can get in trouble is if I let anybody be bigger than us. My job is to make sure no one's bigger than us or better than us. If we are the best and we're the biggest, then we will always survive. When you love what you do, you, you know, you're just focused on doing what you love. So I, I never had those thoughts of shutting down or going away, which is how do you win? How do you stay afloat? Keep bobbing and weaving. Like it's evolved so much in the last couple of years, even from the time that I joined the company and, and Carrie joined the company, like to see how it's evolved, it's only going to continue. Right, so that's the key, and I think you know, working with Byron, right? He has vision um, that others don't have, and they can't see, right? So when he begins to see something, like he just talked about, right, with Local Now, he saw the opportunity before others did. I, I'm familiar with some of the stuff that he's doing with HBCUs and all that. So I think he is one of the, he's a kind of leader in the space that we need more of. We do a rev share. Like a rev share, exactly. A rev share. We do a rev share and what we have, we have fast channels. And uh, Carrie, how many fast channels we have now? So for the local now streaming channels, we actually own those. So those are all ours. For the fast channels on local now, it really depends. We have our own local now O and O channels where we provide those. I have a team in house that actually does those. And then we have a number of other channels uh, local and national uh, channels that we have as well, um, and we share the revenue on those. People everywhere are tuning their radios to Columbia University's 89.9 WKCR-FM. It's late, but it's time for the Stretch Armstrong and Bobito Show, and listeners never miss. Me too. I listened in the 90s religiously. Greg Knight will call me, yo, two pounds over here, we'll hang, but yo, KRS-1 has come out, and we just listened to y'all all night until it went off. That was the first spark. From there, things start happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but this is some stores, but once we lock this distribution thing down, it's gonna be in all stores. Okay. Yeah, just got that pick of the week. Oh, what they want. And I'm uh, here in Vegas on behalf of me and Bobito at the NAB, National Association of Broadcasters, Hall of Fame induction. And uh, how did it happen? How do you tell me how it happened? I mean, we stopped doing radio in, uh, in 1999, and here we are in 2023. <laughs> we were in the right place at the right time with the right mind, you know, to provide an opportunity which wasn't presented at that time for teenagers without contracts. That's basically what it was. And so, you know, 33 years later, in 2023, we're here at the NAB Hall of Fame induction, and I'm just so happy. But when it came to the music, we were dead serious, and we were really serious about the culture that the music was a part of and that we were a part of, and that is the culture that, of course, is celebrating its 50th birthday this year, hip-hop. 
And so we've identified exactly what types of content on our platform do that. So chat GPT is not going to be running <laughs> channels anytime soon. It's an idea. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we use a, a portion of, I wouldn't call it AI, but algorithm, you know, to uh, measure performance of the shows, especially how well they monetize. People often ask me, how do we find our stories? Well, 60 Minutes doesn't do audience research. I'm frankly, not interested in whether people want more good news or health reporting. It's our job to find stories, say yes or no to them, and cover them. I'm very happy to report that 60 Minutes still has a healthy amount of resources, and we go anywhere in the world we want to. If we think there's a story in Iceland or Cambodia, we go tell it. We invest in our work so that Leslie, Scott, Bill, Anderson, Sharon, and John can hopefully make you feel more informed about a topic. We take our responsibility very seriously at 60 Minutes. I'm deeply honored to be able to carry on Don Hewitt's vision and protect the work and legacy of Mike, Morley, Ed, Diane, and Harry Reason. Compared to years ago, my dad used to come here. I first heard about this from my dad. He used to come here as a, he was a chief engineer at WLS-TV in Chicago and used to run the Oprah Winfrey show, which was previous to that AM Chicago. And this was the show they all came to, right? It was this show where they came to get new ideas about building the studio. And, you know, I remember he came one time and then about a year or so later, or within that year, they had started the move to switching to robotic cameras based on what he learned here. Do you know I, some of my videos appear on searches for video, even though it's not in the description, it's in the subtitle. This is a um, production. And inside that production, these are all projects. And we've added over 18,500 movies, TV shows, documentaries. Please welcome Adrian DJ Stretch Armstrong.